double check here where our levels are. Oh, level one. I usually start with zeros, but I guess in this case that makes perfect sense. And that's all start game is going to do. And let's let's give that a test. It should be should be working now. Start game loads our first level. We still got our music and our new graphics. Oh, we're doubling up on the ball there. I have to take a look at that. So we still have a little bit of misplaced logic from some previous game decisions. No problem. Oh, I know what's going on there. Absolutely. Um, there were certain assumptions that we made in level one that you would be starting in that game and it would spawn various things. But as I recall on the player, there's also an on level load function. And I think that spawns a ball. So we're, we're kind of doubling up. Uh, the simplest way to fix it. Um, yeah, save this. And this is going to be our, it's going to be a level. But it is just going to be called main menu dot unity. So the simplest way to fix it is in level one, we don't actually spawn a ball. Well, we're going to have to look at our code at some point. We'll come back to this. Let's go back to main menu. Because there's actually a couple of changes we're going to have to make to how this stuff gets spawned in the first place. So that's the easy part. The main menu start button, obviously a couple of bugs we need to fix. But the more complicated question is, what do we do for select level? Um, there's a couple of different ways I'm going to treat it just to keep this a little bit more simple. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have a separate level for this called load level. And we're going to have another scene and that's just where, where that's going to happen. So we're going to go and create a new scene. We'll save it right away, save it under level. And this is called load level. And we've got that saved. This level is not going to be terribly exciting. It's going to look a lot like our main menu level. So we're going to go and create an empty. We're going to call this empty the um, load level GUI. Uh, we are going to make it a prefab. And I'm actually going to just duplicate. Uh, right, there's not an option in there. So control D, duplicate my main menu GUI script. I'm going to call it my load level GUI script. I'm getting an error because the class is not called the right thing right here. Load level GUI script. So that's quite happy. Um, but now we do have to uh, change the actual function. We're going to keep the layout exactly as is. Uh, we can get rid of these functions. Instead, we're going to give you the option of choosing which level you want to start at. And we'll add some extra logic in here later. But right now we've got these two levels. We we'll give the player the option of starting at either level. And you know what? We'll embed the, uh, well, Let's do it better. Load level uh, one, load level two. I'm gonna, again, farm it out to a separate function just because we may want some extra logic in here later on. Uh, level number. And again, we could be passing this as a string with a level name, but we can also go application dot, actually this won't work because I was going to say we could load it by number, but the problem is that this will correspond to the scenes in our project setup. So, okay, what we'll do is we're just going to call it level plus the level number, and that will work fine. So, if we, first we're going to have to go to our build settings, and we are going to have to drag and drop these things. Thank you everyone who reminded me in the comments about the uh, the right way to pull this in. So let's go and put main menu first. There we are. That's kind of weird. I can't see the line. Uh, I don't think the order and anything else matters terribly. So so yeah, level one is actually number three. So we could do call load level application load level and pass it three and that would work here. Uh, but obviously that would feel a little counterintuitive. So this is going to be totally fine. And so now if I um, start from our proper first scene, which is the main menu, yes, you can save this. Start here, select level, and, ah, I forgot to add the script. But it does properly send us to the load level scene, which is what we care for. And then load level script is going to be on there. And now if I start from the load level scene, there we go, level one and two, and if we hit one, perfect. All right. Now, obviously, we don't want to be able to start from just any level all the time. We want the player to be to have to unlock this. So how do we track which level he's beaten, or at least reached, 
and then unlock that. Now, it's simple for level one, obviously. Level one should always be unlocked. But we only want the level two button to appear if the player has reached level two. So there is the, the simplest way to do this, okay? A sort of a global save for this sort of thing is to wrap this. Well, we don't have to wrap it. We could use a Boolean here. But you know, for, for clarity, I'm going to wrap this in a big if, right? We only want this button to show up if the player has done something that has unlocked it. Um, and that is stored in a class called player preps. Player preps can save data, it can save strings and integers and that sort of thing, uh, accessible by some sort of key, and know if you've sort of opened it or not. So what we're going to do is, you can see there's gets here, and there's also a set for ints, strings, and floats. So we're going to use an integer to track if this level has been unlocked. So it's going to be a key. We're going to call it um, unlocked level two. And we're going to use the variant where we can pass it a default value. So we're going to say by default, this should return a zero, All right? If the player's never done anything, it's going to return a zero. I'm missing a parentheses. There we go. Um, so it's going to return a zero, but we only want this button to show up if it equals one. So now if I go back over here, if I hit play, we don't get our level two button because we haven't unlocked it yet. So how are we going to unlock it? Well, let's go and do it very, very plainly here. Um, where is, is it the brick script that knows when the last brick is dead? Let's take a look. There we go. Load a new level. So the brick knows when the current level has been defeated. So this is actually where we're going to want to set when a new level is unlocked. Now, the big problem is that everything is going to be hard coded into strings right now, but we'll, we'll figure that out later. So if the number of bricks have gone down to zero, then player preps dot set int for the key called unlock level two, we want to set it to one. Now, as soon as we beat level one, it will set that string. It'll also still send it to level two. But then from this point on, whenever we start the game and we go to that select level screen, we're going to be able to click the button to jump to level two because we'll have unlocked it. And if ever you need to reset those things, you can, uh, there's a function here, uh, player preps dot delete key. So you can delete one key, unlock level two, for example and reset that, or you can do dot delete all. That will delete all keys that were set for this player for this game. And that sort of resets all that stuff. So for this game, I don't see a reason why we'd want that except for debugging, but even then I'm not sure that it's particularly called for. So this is still really naive and everything is hard coded in because we only have two levels. What we're really going to want is a, a better level manager. And that's also going to help deal with some of the issues that we have when we start the game here and we have two balls. What is up with that? So let's investigate. So I can see where the issue is here. Uh, in our first level is where, oops, let's go to the right window. There, there it was, is where we have our paddle. And we tell the paddle, first of all, that we don't want it to become destroyed when we load a new level, which is fine. None of the other levels have a paddle. Obviously, this is going to cause an issue in a moment. Um, also, when it starts, it instantly spawns a ball. But then also, when a level is loaded, it spawns a ball. So that's the sort of double ball behavior that we're getting that we don't want. So we're going to have to remove, well, probably this one. But let's, let's well, no, there's no doubt we're going to want to remove that. But we're going to go ahead and do that now. Um, but we don't want to spawn the paddle on level one anyway. And the reason we don't want to do that is if we select, if we elect to start level two because we've unlocked it before, level two doesn't have a paddle. Right now, our paddle is simply per persisting over from the first level. So that's not the behavior we want. We want to, we need some other way of properly tracking this persistence. And there's a few different ways of implementing it. Um, we could, the reason we're persisting the paddle right now is because the paddle is responsible for keeping track of your lives. That's, that's, that's one thing. Um, and what we could do is, well, actually, I'm not sure that's true. 
our lives GUI. Does it have any scripts? No, it doesn't. All right. So it is our paddle that's responsible for keeping track of our lives. So we've got two options. One, we could remove the paddle from level one at the very least and make the paddle spawn in some other way. Uh, we could have an intermediary le level, which is responsible for setting all this stuff up. Uh, we could have an object set on each level to check, hey, does a paddle exist? No? All right, better spawn a paddle to start off with uh, and then move on from there. And that would actually keep the, the paddle code pretty similar to what it is now. Um, in fact, if I did it that way, we'd actually need this spawn ball in here, right? So the first level you load, no matter what actual level number it is, if it's got this little, this little, you know, empty game object set up that's just check to see if a paddle exists. No paddle, create the paddle, in which case on paddle start, it'll spawn a ball. And then on future level loads, it'll do this to keep spawning balls. And that, you know, that's totally functional and feasible and may actually be the easiest way to do it now that I'm thinking about it. Yeah, I kind of like that idea. So we can get rid of this paddle entirely. Actually, I just